Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I welcome all of you once again to St. James Pentecostal Church and to the 9 a.m. service. Hallelujah. Let's go before God. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus. <coughs> Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for life. We thank you for waking us up this morning, O oh Lord God. We thank you for good rest, good sleep, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, we can come before your throne this morning, O oh God. And we can praise you, we can glorify your name, we can magnify your holy name, we can exalt your holy name, O oh God. Father God, as we have entered into your house, O oh God, we come with a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of praise, O oh God, a heart of worship. O oh God, we come to worship you this morning. We come to adore you. We come to love you, O oh God. We come to lift up holy hands, O oh Lord God. Father God, we come to bless your name, O oh God. Oh God, we praise you this morning. We praise you this morning, oh God. Father God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father God, we worship you for all that you have done, all that you are about to do, oh Lord God. You have been a faithful God. Oh God, we thank you for your faithfulness, oh Lord God. We thank you, oh God, that you have forgiven us of all our sins, oh God. You have washed us, you have cleansed us, oh Lord God. You have made us holy, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we serve a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh God, you are awesome. You're awesome in this place, O oh God. And Father God, even now we ask that your Holy Spirit have his way. Your will be done, O oh God. Let your will be done in this place. Father God, we come against every principality. We come against the powers of the rulers of the darkness in heavenly places, O oh God. We come against every plan, every plot, every scheme of the enemy to distract and to disrupt this service. We bind them up in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we loose your Holy Spirit in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, O oh God. And let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We welcome the worship leaders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So good morning to everyone. Good morning. It's a, it's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Can we greet your neighbor and say welcome? You know, it's good to see you. This is Youth Week. This is the reason why the youths are taking over the worship session. And we are coming to energize and be lifted up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Jesus. In the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout, I will dance to you. You have been my hell forever and ever. Help me sing, hey, hey, hey. my God is good.
strong power, strong power, strong power, strong power. He's the mighty, mighty. He's the mighty, mighty. He's the mighty, mighty. He's the mighty. He's the mighty. He's the mighty. He deliver us. Jesus is mighty to save. He's strong to deliver. Hallelujah. 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 Let's continue to worship him. Let's continue to be in his presence this morning. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. Hallelujah. We exalt your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. Say, God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Yes, give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Say, God.
sing there is only one
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it all. And He's not just worthy, He deserves the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are there any visitors in the house this morning? Or you haven't been here for a long time? And you're here with us this morning. Could you stand? So we could afford you that welcome. Wow, praise God. Let's give them that St. James Pentecostal welcome. We welcome you to St. James Pentecostal. The most anointed church in Trinidad. I hope you're enjoying the service. And we hope we will, you could make this your home church. So you will no longer be a visitor. You'll be a member. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone with a burning testimony? Sister Jokes, praise God. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I just want to thank God for his goodness towards me and towards my family. My mom has not been well, and um, over the last month or so, it has been quite a challenge. But I thank God for the prayer of the saints this morning, and um, I told her she has to come in church to give God thanks, and don't be like the... Um, nine lepers who didn't come to give God thanks, but I want to personally thank God for his grace and his mercy. It has been difficult, but I have seen the goodness of the Lord and his grace and his mercies towards me. I had to go, um, I'm still, we have three more days to go through and I'm standing here, the process is not over, but I'm standing here just to give God thanks. Um, we had to go to San Fernando for five weeks actually turned into seven weeks and um every day except the weekends and there were periods where i remember one of the days i was so sleepy on the road and uh, my mother was singing to me and eating something like a lullaby in my ear. <laughs> but i thank god for his protection and i thank god for his saving mercies but above all i want to thank god for the prayer of the saints there were days when i couldn't pray and there were days when uh, my mom couldn't pray and there were very difficult nights and difficult days and I just knew for a fact because I felt the presence of God 
in our home and this prayer of the saints and i just want to say thank i don't want to be like the nine lepers who didn't come back to say thank you i want to thank god for the prayer of the saints continue to pray for her continue to pray for us and I, 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 i've seen the supernatural hands of god in her life I remember one day her being in excruciating pain, and I hope that she's watching right now. Um, being in excruciating pain, as though the devil himself came into the house, and it was really bad. I remember telling the Lord, Lord, I don't even know what to do. You ever felt so helpless that you can't even, you just don't know what to do. The medication wasn't even working. And I remember God said, you know, just, um, I remember she said, just put on hymns of healing. I remember um, putting, finding Don Me On song. God will make a way where there seemed to be no way. And as we began to play that song, God intervened. And the thing that we were struggling with to happen just began. To, I saw God began to just operate in her body like literal surgery. And I thank God because that was two Thursdays ago. And I remember the Friday morning, she woke up with no pain. I couldn't believe, and I know God heals, and I know God intervenes in a supernatural way. But she got up the Friday morning, no pain. Let me tell you, we had a rough Thursday, Wednesday, and a Thursday night. And I stand there just to give God glory. I don't know what your situation is, and I don't know what your circumstances, but I know that the God that I serve is a healer, and he's a miracle-working God. I can't say that she's out of the woods, but I know that God came in and intervened at the point in time when we need to. And I continue to believe God for her healing because God is a faithful God. Trust God. He would not disappoint you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still in the healing business. I don't know about you, but he healed me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anyone who celebrated their birthday from Sunday last week to this week? Sunday going to today? No birthdays? Oh, we have one. Can I have the worship leaders, please? Hallelujah. A happy birthday, a happy birthday to you. 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 See you close along with God. Happy birthday to you. With his blessings, we'll see much more. Happy birthday to you. See you close along with God. Happy birthday to you. With his blessings, to see much more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, a 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 happy birthday to you. I would like to wish them. Happy birthday. Praise God. Is there anyone celebrating their anniversary? No one? Praise God. Hallelujah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to run through some announcements quickly. There are no announcements also. Um, we have Sunday morning service at 7 a.m. And... 9 a.m. On Mondays, we normally have prayer on the Zoom platform. This week, because it's youth week, there's no prayer meeting on Monday. There's no Bible study on Tuesday. There's no crusaders on Thursday. And there's no prayer meeting on Friday. There's also no children's church. Hallelujah. We have, well, we have baby dedication this morning and we have a special announcement from the youth ministry anyone from the youth ministry
So good morning once again, Saints. Youth Week is here. Yeah, Youth Week is here. So, and it begins tomorrow at daybreak at 6 p.m. As you can see on the flyer, there's Sermonet and Social Media Evangelism. On the Monday, there is the instrumental and the group song on Tuesday. Wednesday will be dance and our community project. Thursday will be our drama. Um, Friday will be the concert. Saturday will be our sports where we'll be partnered with another group of churches and we are part of the red team called the fire starters. So be there in your red. Um, that will be in the Savannah. The time I will let you all know once they give us the confirmation time. Sunday is our, our award ceremony. So please come and support us. We need everybody's support. Yeah, it's for points too, so we want to win. So please be there in your yellow teas, in your yellow mustard teas, if you have the old ones from before, if you just have a yellow pla plain yellow mustard tea, or if you want a jersey, please see me. Yeah, it's not too late to get a jersey. The cost is 130. So come out and support us in Jesus' name. Oh, and we are doing all activities, so please be there every day. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I just realized something. It's youth week, so that's why they asked me to cheer. They wanted all the youth to be involved. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're getting ready for, to take our tithes and offering. A cheerful time, so everybody should be smiling. Praise God. I ask the worship leaders to, to come. Can I ask Sister Safia to Bless the offering, please. Hallelujah. So I want to invite you to stand. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name today. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be found in your house, whether in person or virtually. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name to worship, to hear of your word. God, and so we are thankful for the opportunity to give. God, you have provided for us. And sometimes we, we lose sight of you providing. Sometimes we may think it's a connection or, or a business deal or our education or even our diligence and discipline. But God, in a moment, you can remove that provision. In a moment, everything can be wiped away. In a moment, we can be incapacitated. In a moment, everything can disappear. So God, we thank you for your keeping power. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We do not take it for granted. Mighty God. So Father, we give cheerfully. We give gratefully. Oh God, we give it a willing heart. Knowing that you have been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We do not give grudgingly, begrudgingly, nor of necessity because we don't need to give you the money because you don't need our money. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. You said that you would supply all, all, it, all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Your riches don't come from us, but our riches come from you. Because it's you who give the power to get wealth. It is you, oh God, who give us the strength to pursue. It is you who give us the opportunity to gather and to sell and to work and to grow and to be lifted up, oh God. So Father, we give gratefully this morning. We give in faith, knowing that according to your word, that you're going to grant us a greater blessing. You're going to multiply back unto us what we have given this morning, oh God. Give seed to the sower this morning, and those who need bread, grant it unto them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the hands that will manage these funds, oh God, that they will do it, oh God, honestly, in integrity, and in accordance with your purpose and your will, that your kingdom be advanced. Advanced. We honor you and we bless you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you.
Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, we're supposed to do this song. Amen. the Lord. Please remain standing. Yeah, no. I just want I just want us to welcome back our pastor. Let's give him a big praise clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Alistair. Good morning, saints. I greet you in the name of our Lord, the Savior, and soon coming King, Jesus Christ. At this time, we do have, I believe, three babies to dedicate unto the Lord. So I do want to ask the parents and the God parents to come at this time and to stand at the altar facing me. And the rest of us, you can have your seats. Amen. And while they are coming, I do want to say thanks to the leadership that you know give for the persons who give leadership in my absence while I was on vacation I do want to say thanks to you and all of you who came to church you know the person said people came to church every Sunday while I was not here that means that we are maturing quite well good to hear that and uh, I also understand that the three preachers that we had they preached so good you all didn't miss me <laughs> all right so amen I guess the third baby pop she's still coming okay <laughs> Amen. I will pray after. Amen. I'm reading to you a passage of scripture that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And reading from verse 4. Where 
and the scripture declares, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be like frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. Amen. A very familiar passage of scripture. If you are a member of this church, where generally on the first Sunday, I would read this, um, the second Sunday when we have baby dedication, I would read this passage of scripture to encourage parents to teach their children the word of the Lord. So you who are parents, you are commanded to teach your children the word of the Lord. Amen. This is your primary responsibility. The secondary responsibility will be the church. Though many times the church has the primary responsibility to do such. Um, because parents fail in their responsibility. I do want to encourage you to be obedient to the word of the Lord and set yourself to teach your child the word of the Lord. Now, I often say to parents, you cannot be a teacher if you don't first become a student. Nobody teaches well if they um, don't take time to study. So we need to study in order for us to teach. Amen. So we want to pray for you first of all because it's a daunting task task being a parent you know it's not easy it is said every child come with their own manual that you have to study and change your parenting style for every child child that you have I don't even understand how those who have 10 and 15 make it <laughs> because they have to develop principles and philosophies so that they don't stress um, any individual child, you know, but they're able to adequately mature. But I do know this, God who is in control, if he bless you with plenty, is able to give you the skill and the strategy in order to be successful. Now, one thing I also know, they say one harder than two. And three and four. So I see those with one overwhelmed. All right? I know this is your first. All right, so that's one, right? First, oh, two. all right. So you're starting to get it easy now. All right? So we want to pray for you and ask God's blessings upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I was going to ask Sister Jill, so let's pray for the parents, Brother Alistair, come and help me um, dedicate the baby, but we will ask Sister Jill to pray for the parents. My children, just stretch your hands towards the parents, please, as, the, as we pray. Praise the Lord. Father, this morning we say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for these parents being obedient to your word and bringing their child or their children into the house to be dedicated unto the Lord. I pray even now that you will touch each parent, the mothers, the fathers, that you will touch those who stand as witnesses, dear God, as we know as God parents. I pray, God, that you will touch each one of them in the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom to raise their child, dear God, as you would see it fit, dear God, as ordained by you. I pray, God, even in the difficult moments, dear God, that you will give them peace and patience, dear God. As Pastor Jill said, each child comes with their own manual. And I pray, God, that you will give godly wisdom to the parents. Father, even where they don't even know how to at times, I pray that they will call upon you 
your word says to call upon you and you will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we don't know of so god in times of difficulties in times of trials dear god because it will come i pray god that they will rest in you in the name of jesus that you will give them the peace that pass it all understanding that you will give them oh god joy and gladness your child oh god will bring happiness and contentment to them in the name of jesus i pray above all dear god that they will come they as parents will come to the oh god's oh god realization that they need you in their lives because they cannot lead as you will have them to lead so i pray god that they will submit their lives to you oh god that they will be able to raise up their children in the fear and the admonition of god in the name of jesus bless each parent bless the god parents to be oh god good support for their oh god children in the name of jesus so god we commit every parent and every God parent who stand at this altar this morning. God, as they make this sacred commitment to raise your child in the fear of God, I pray, God, that you will strengthen them, you will equip them, you will direct them, and you will lead them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I to pray for
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's a passage of scripture that resonates within my spirit and somehow whenever I try to move from it, it keeps uh, steadfastly there and I go back to it as I glean the various truths that reside in this passage. Um, I'm reading part of it, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 to 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 to 20. And when you've found the scripture, you can stand, please. Hebrews 6, 16 to 20, as we talk about Jesus being our sure and steadfast anchor. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 16 to 20. And the scripture declares, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an, as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus, our sure and steadfast anchor. Gracious, merciful, and loving Father, we bow in your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for the anointing of your spirit. Thank you for being our God, our source, and our strength. Thank you for being in control. God, I ask that you will bless this witness. Charge it with your anointing. Meet each one of us at the point of our need. We come against everything that will distract us in the service. And we ask that you will bring everything into alignment to your will, to your purpose. In the name of Jesus. So we say let God arise in this house and let the enemy be scattered. And we thank you for the victory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Allow me to speak to us this morning more than preaching, but to take my time and to share that which I believe the Lord has laid upon my heart as I use for a theme, Jesus, or sure and steadfast anchor. The author of the book of Hebrews addresses the many Jewish believers in the early church who were slipping back into the rites and rituals of Judaism. And they were doing so in order to escape the mountain persecution of the day. And you will know, if you do some church history, that the persecution that the early church experienced was not any kind of persecution that we experience somebody bad talk you or offend you and you know you become offended or somebody say to you something because you're a Christian you simply become offended 
in the early church when it comes when, uh, to persecution, they were burned to the stake, boiled in oil. They were thrown into the arena with wild beasts. And with the mountain persecution, many of the believers were slipping back into Judaism to escape the persecution. This letter serves as an encouragement and an exhortation for those persecuted believers so that they will continue in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The book begins in chapter 1 by saying, God, who in sundry times and in diverse manners spoke unto the fathers through the prophets, but has now in these last days spoken to us through his Son, Jesus Christ. The author seeks first of all to establish the lordship of Jesus Christ and the salvific work that he accomplished on Calvary's cross. To say to the believers that Jesus is the only way. That there is, that Jesus is the Messiah who was to come and who came he is the author of salvation. So as you begin to read the book of Hebrews, you will recognize the writer says that Jesus was better than the angels, better than the Levitical priesthood, better than Melchizedek, Moses, the Old Testament prophets. For he is the Messiah, the son of the living God the author of salvation. He writes with the intention to encourage them, to motivate them, to continue to serve the Lord, to live for Jesus, to hold on in the midst of the persecution. And many times when we go through some stuff, it, it is difficult that we get to that place, you know, I'm not talking about the slight stuff, but the very, very difficult stuff. When you believe in the Lord for a miracle or for a breakthrough and nothing is happening. Where you get to that point where I've heard some believers say, if I was not a Christian, And with such mountain persecution, I could imagine it would have been easier to slip back into Judaism. Now, we who live in the Western world, we don't know anything really about intense persecution. What we experience is what I call passive persecution. Because in those days, if you are a Christian, they will, they had the up, they will throw you in the arena with wild beasts. Um, some of us need to read the Fox's Book of Martyr. And when I read it, I, I, I didn't only see the faith of mature believers, but what also struck me was the children who were able to be singing praises unto the Lord while the wild beast was coming, were coming. To eat them up because God is not only able to save but God is also able to keep and to satisfy in summary the book of Hebrews addresses three separate groups three separate groups first of all the first group believers in Christ those born again of the Spirit of God they have more than religion. They have a relationship. They are born again. They are saved. God touched their life. Believers in Christ. 
The second group he writes to are the unbelievers who had a knowledge of and an intellectual acceptance of Christ. So they are able to explain their faith. But they have religion more than relationship. The first group had relationship more than religion. The second group had uh, religion more than relationship. Persons who may have grown up in church. Persons who went through the teachings and they have an understanding of Christ. But they have not accepted him in their life as their Lord and personal Savior and have become born again of the Spirit of God. And the third group he writes to are unbelievers who were attracted to Christ. You know, there are many things that attract people to Christianity. In the, in the, in the early days with Jesus, it was miracles. Um, some people are attracted to the music. Some, some persons, you know, there are various attractions that draw persons into the church. But ultimately, this group rejects Christ. So the three groups are believers in Christ, unbelievers who have a knowledge of and an intellectual acceptance of Christ, and unbelievers who are attracted to Christ but ultimately reject him. He therefore issues to the church or to the believers five solemn warnings. Five solemn warnings. Warning number one, the danger of neglect. And that's chapter two from verses one to four, the key verse Verse 3 in chapter 2, where the scripture declares, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The danger of neglect. That salvation could be presented to you, yet you neglect the great, this great salvation. Secondly, the danger of unbelief. So uh, chapters 3 from verse 7 to chapter 4, verse 13, the danger of unbelief. Chapter 3, verse 7 to chapter 4, verse 13. And the key verse here is chapter 3, verse 12, where the Bible says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, in any of you rather, an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. So this, this second solemn warning are for those who lack faith. The scripture declares when the son of man returns, shall he find faith upon the earth. And in this particular passage of scripture, the children of Israel were considered to have an evil heart of unbelief experience a mighty deliverance from Egypt and the first challenge they face, they complain. They face the Red Sea and as if God who delivered them out of Egypt couldn't deliver them through the Red Sea. As if God who delivered out of Egypt delivered from the Red Sea couldn't provide for them. And every challenge they face, they complain. And the Bible says that these individuals had an evil heart of unbelief. And the author here is warning them uh, of, of take heed, the danger of unbelief. If you believe God, I want to encourage you to believe him. God is God. You know, God said to Jesus, said to Mary and Martha, only believe. And if you only believe, you shall see the glory of the Lord. The third danger, the danger of spiritual immaturity. That's taken from chapter 5, verses 4, 6 to 20. 
the danger of spiritual immaturity the the the, the section for which we will um, look at later on chapter 5 verse 14 says but strong meat belonging to them that are of full age even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so he's warning them about spiritual immaturity That it's important as a believer you grow spiritually. Because if you don't grow spiritually, you will find yourself unable to discern good and evil. And when you're supposed to be eating meat, you're still drinking milk. In fact, from a physical standpoint, we would know, those of us who are parents, so even though you don't have to be a parent, you, you, you start off, the baby starts off drinking milk. And then from milk, what you, you graduate the child to, what, mashed. You know, mashed vegetables or what have you. And then they move, they graduate stage by stage by stage, growing until they could eat meat. And there is the intention, every, every, every parent should have the intention that your child grows to that point where their stomach becomes strong enough that they could eat some meat. Now they could decide not to eat meat or not, but you have the responsibility to ensure that they, they eat meat. No parent, in fact, after you get a particular age to a particular age from a physical standpoint, if you have not attained a particular level of maturity, you're in trouble. You have to get to the age of being able to not only feed yourself, but feed somebody else also. Somebody say amen. Amen. There are some things you just have to you just have to do. You have to put in place. The, you know we could complain about our parents, but when you get to the age of the, there's a particular age you have to get to. You're an adult now. You have to you have to be able to feed yourself. At a particular age, nobody's supposed to be saying to you, "Brush your teeth, take a shower, comb your hair." If a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. I'm glad a female said amen. <laughs> and it's the same thing in terms of Christianity. If you don't grow into maturity, there is no discerning of, of good and evil. And I'm sure you like me, when you peruse uh, social media, you recognize uh, Christianity today is unable to discern good from evil. I've been calling evil good and good evil. The fourth danger is a danger of failing to endure. And that's found in chapter 10, verse 26 to 39. Verse 38, a key verse in chapter 10. Where it says, verse 38, all right, of chapter 10, 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Danger of feeling to endure. That you could turn back. That you could stop serving the Lord. That your offense in church could be enough to cause you to stop coming to church. As if the person is God. And recently, uh, 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 in discussion with someone recently, I've come to realize that people come to church for many reasons. 
I want to say to you, make sure you come into church for God. Because people will disappoint you. And when you come to church for God, God will bless you. Man may not bless you, but I can assure you, God will bless you. And God will not disappoint you because God remains God. They fail to endure. They fail to hold on to God. And warning number five. The inherent danger of refusing God. The inherent danger of refusing God. Chapter 12, verses 25 to 29. Chapter 12, verses 25 to 29. Verse 25 declares, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refuse him that speaketh on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Jesus speaks. God speaks. Man speaks. And beyond, beyond all this speaking, there is a voice of God. And that's why the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Because after the preacher preaches, after you've heard people minister the word, there's a voice of God that speaks to you as an individual that you know that God exists, that you won't just hear by chance or evolved from some monkey. But you know that God brought you into the world and you're no fool. God is real. And there's that inherent danger of refusing God. You might refuse the preacher. You might refuse to go to church. You might refuse to read the Bible. But beyond all of that, there is a God who speaks and communicates with humanity that each one of us could know him. Amen. So he gives five solemn warnings to the church. The danger of neglect, the danger of unbelief, the danger of spiritual immaturity, the danger of failing to endure and the inherent danger of refusing God. The section for which we have read addresses the mystery of walking with God, which is parts of chapter 5 and the whole of chapter 6. From chapter 5, verse 11, and the whole of chapter 6, uh, it, it speaks of the, the mystery of walking with God. And the author issues four things to believers to whom he is writing. Four things. One, an observation. Two, a challenge. Three, a warning. And four, an assurance. First of all, the observation. And based upon the first service, my time expired by the time I got to the end of the observation so that we will have a next, a part two next week, the Lord's willing. First of all, the observation. In chapter 5, verse 11, the author observes that the Hebrews to whom he is writing have become dull of hearing. Hebrews, they have become dull of hearing. There is no spiritual sensitivity to hear the voice of God, to hear the word of God. They have become dull of hearing. Slow to understand and slow to understand, not in the context that they don't have understanding, but they were negligent, lazy. They didn't want to take the time to understand. They were not ready to understand the rich, complex aspects of their Christian faith. They wanted to spend the rest of their Christian experience drinking milk. 
Now, I've heard some stories of children moving from preschool to primary school still breastfeeding. I don't know if you have heard some, I've heard some. But even the parent and even nature, there comes a time when enough is enough. Growth has to take place. Should not be in church for a long time and not growing spiritually. It is a dangerous thing when you're dull of hearing and you have no spiritual insight to see. Dangerous thing. You become dull of hearing. Whatever people tell you, you believe. And I believe there's a voice of the Spirit. So I may get a prophetic word from the Lord, but the Holy Spirit on the inside confirms that word that has been spoken so that it comes alive to me. Young believers support, need milk and older believers need meat. So if you are, if you are a an older believer, mature believers should be, first of all, more skillful in the word of God. They should be skillful in the word of the Lord. Older believers should be able to teach. To teach something. And we'll go into all that, uh, the, 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 the rudiments, the, the, the principles that the author um, suggest mature believers should be more skilled in the word of God. You should not be in church for all this time and have not read from Genesis to Revelation. You have not been, you should not be in church for, for such a long time and have not been studying the word of the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Scripture declares, study to show yourself approved. A workman or a woman who need not be ashamed of the word of the Lord. Study. Need to study. Study the word. Need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth so that Mature believers should be more skilled in the word of the Lord. Because it's a dangerous thing when you're not growing. And I, you know, thank God for God's mercy and so forth. And thank God for mercy. But, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, I will look at the animal kingdom. And... Uh, there are some animals in the animal kingdom. After you reach a particular age, the mother leaving you to fend for yourself. <laughs> you know, well, we are not animals, so we don't leave our children to fend for ourselves. But, you know, there, there comes a point in time where you need to mature. Amen? Yeah, there comes a point in time. And, and uh, I mean, some of them kick them out of the nest. Some of them, they leave them, they wake up one morning and um, you, you see them crying, um, you know, looking, looking for the parent, the parent gone. Time to grow up. You know, I believe God does that to us sometimes. God allows us to go through some harsh, difficult situations within our lives, within, within our, our core circumstances within our lives so that we can grow up, that we can mature. Because we need to grow. If, 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 you're, not, if you're not exercising patience, then he will, he will put some situations there for you, for you to learn patience. If, you, if you're not praying as you ought to be praying, he puts some situations there that you learn to pray. Because you need to pray. 
He brings some situations within your life where you just have to believe God. Because if God doesn't do it, it's not going to come to pass. God is God. Matthew, to your believers, study the word. Know the word. Secondly, be mature believers should be able to distinguish between good and evil. She has some of that already. Should be able to distinguish between good and evil. We should not be calling evil good and good evil. You know, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. And I've I've come to the I've come, we, we, we have come to the place in Christianity, once it lawful, we're doing it. And I believe it's important we have to get to the place. If it's not expedient, if it's not profitable, don't do it. You know the Bible, God, God gave us some hard things to, to do. If, if, if your brother not mature enough to eat meat, you don't eat meat. You ain't find that hard? I find that's a hard statement. But that's what the scripture advises. So I remember somebody in my, in my early, Christ, early in Christianity, somebody asked, and they said, well, pastor, if I can't eat it in front of them, I will eat it behind their back. <laughs> and I say, yes, I'm doing that too. Because I want to eat my ham. <laughs> But they're calling good evil and evil good. And, that's, and that's, just, that's just the surface of it, you know. The depth of it is being able to rightly discern good from evil. What is right and what is wrong. Because evil, looking, they're, they're now presenting evil as good and good as evil. And I don't want to even go through examples because sometimes I recognize there are some things you need the Lord to tell you. Because I could start doing examples, and every example I tell myself, somebody will say, oh, Pastor, that's good. The pastor, I see nothing wrong with that. Let the Spirit of the Lord talk to you as you grow. Thirdly, mature believers should move from being a disciple to making disciples. But your believers should move from being a disciple to making disciples. Matthew 28, 19. Jesus' last command or first priority. You move from being disciples, somebody teaching you that you're now teaching the class. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations. Teach. Not just preach, you know, teach. And I can tell you sometimes we have, uh, 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 sometimes I recognize, sometimes the best place that we have to teach is the Sunday morning. Because if you wait for some people to come by, but study, they're not coming. So we have to take our time sex to explain, to encourage, to motivate. But some things are really for Bible study. Because it's really questions and answers. And, and you'll stay in one point all the time trying to extract the truth from a particular passage of scripture. So when it comes to, if you want to be a mature believer, Bible study is necessary. I believe if you, want to, if you want to stand here on a Sunday morning to preach, you have to get some kind of formal teaching. It's more than God called me. So God called you, yes, and you're filled with the Spirit, and you have no need for man to teach you. Well then, I don't understand that. Everybody needs somebody. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, commit the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So you arrive at the place, Paul, 
taught Timothy, Timothy now teaching faithful men, the faithful men teaching others, and the word of God continues as we move from stage to stage, teaching and preaching, growing. So as I seek to close this morning, we understand that the, the, the writer, the author to the, to the Hebrews was writing in a time when persecution was rampant and the believers were slipping back. It was a lot to deal with. And many times we go through some stuff when we have a lot to deal with. And, and, and nobody knows like you know. So I want to close with 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. That says, There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That we have to know that we are not alone. Come on, tell your neighbor you're not alone. Oh yes, tell the neighbor, you're not alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. I've, I've come to recognize, brethren, that you can't measure pain, you can't measure temptation, you can't me or you shouldn't measure pain, temptation, and suffering, because my temptation is different to your temptation. But my temptation stressing me and your temptation stressing you. Who say my temptation more than your temptation? Or my suffering more than your suffering? And I believe what the devil does is he brings us to a place where we begin to think that what we are going through, we are alone. And let me, let, let me assure you, everybody goes through. Everybody goes through. I wish as a preacher I could stand here and tell you that you wouldn't go through anything. We went through a generation where we so be too blessed to be stressed and we too anointed to be disappointed. And we come to recognize that even though we blessed, we will be still stressed. And in fact, the more you're blessed, is the more stress will come. And the more anointing you want, is the more disappointment you will get. Because God will not trust us with high levels of anointing if he can trust us to go through some difficult situations and still serve him and still live for him. So you see when you're going through some difficult situations, hold on to God. You see when persecution comes and suffering comes, hold on to God. Amen. Yea, he that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But the Bible went on to say, but God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is a faithful God. And God who is a faithful God, amen, will, will make a way. God will do the supernatural. God will, God will take us through. God will not cause us to be tempted that above we are able. Lord have mercy. Sometimes I feel I can't bear it. The Sajil said, you know, like this thing too much to bear. Anybody ever go through something that's too much to bear? Anybody? All right. Those of you who didn't put up your hand, let me assure you, it come in. <laughs> it coming. Oh, you ashamed to put ashamed, ashamed to put up your hand. It's coming. There are some things you go through in life, it's just too much to bear. But it's, God says, but God says, you will be able to bear it. And you will be able to go through it. 
And as you go through it, you will have the victory through it because God is a faithful God. I want to say to those who are believers, hold on to God. Because I could say this, and let, let me rephrase that as I close. The question is, where are you? Are you born again? Or you, are you an unbeliever who have a knowledge of Christ and an intellectual acceptance of him? Or you're just attracted to Christ? I believe if you're not saved, you know you're not saved. Me personally. Because I knew I was not saved. And I know I knew something happened when I got saved. There's a reason why Jesus treated the religious persons, the scribes and the Pharisees, the way he treated them. Because they knew they were not saved. And, he, and judgment came to them because they were teaching something for which they themselves knew was not bringing about salvation. If you're not saved, if you're not born again of the Spirit of the Lord, serve the Lord. How shall we escape, the scripture declares, if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? How shall I escape? How shall you escape? Judgment is coming. We live in a time where we see the signs of the times. We see where, where, where uh, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, farming. Man, scripture is being fulfilled right, left, and center, right before us. It's time to serve the Lord. This is not a time to backslide. This is a time to hold on to Jesus Christ. God is a faithful God. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, I want to encourage you to serve the Lord and to serve him in spirit and in truth. Don't just grow up in church and you're good enough. Live for Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbor, live for Jesus. Come on, we need to live for the Lord. We need to serve him. Amen. We're not backsliding. Hallelujah. And I'm closing with that. We're not backsliding. Amen. Some people make it make you feel it easy to backslide. Now, I, I can't understand how some people make it so easy to backslide. I don't know. Anybody know? You see when you're saved? No, no, two things. Me, nobody ain't causing me to backslide. And nobody ain't causing me to leave my church just so. I don't understand that. Let me start first with, 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 with God. How could somebody cause you to leave the Lord? It means that you were never saved. It means that you were never saved. Anytime you backslide, you were never saved. Just so. It's hard to backslide. I tried to backslide one time. <laughs> and I recognize, you see me? I need to live for the Lord. I, you know, I, I, I can't just live in sin and, and be comfortable. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Some people make sin easy. You see me? Sin not easy for me. Sin easy for some people. Some people could cuss, they could do this, they could do that, they could go in tongue and jump up, and they could come back, and they could. You see me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? That somebody offend you or something and you backslide. And the second thing is somebody caused you to leave your nice church, Saint James Pentecostal. With a nice pastor like me. <laughs> oh gosh, I had to say it, right? <laughs> Cause you to backslide. This nice church. That is such a blessing. 
with so many blessed persons, such a powerful ministry, so many supportive people. But when the devil setting you up, you forget the 99 who love you and you only focus on the one who offend you. And you, and you leave the church because of the one who offend you and you forget the 99 of us who still love you. Amen? So you forget about the rest of us because one person offend you. Let me tell you, it's a plan from the devil to set you up. Amen? If we serve in the Lord, we serve in the Lord. God is a faithful God. Amen? That's why I end with, with, with uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Uh, God is a faithful God. Amen? I, I may not be always able to trace his hand, but I could always trust his heart. God is a faithful God. Amen? Next year, I'm celebrating 40 years as a Christian. And I say, wow, that's a landmark. I serve in the Lord a long time. I tell you, when, you, when you're serving the Lord so long, you have mountains, you have valleys, you have plains, you have fire, you have floods. Let me tell you, you you've been through it. You, tell me about it. I feel I've been through it. I've been through church hurt. I come to church and I feel the whole church talking about me. I come to church and I feel people against me. People go and lie to me, to the pastor. Oh my, let me tell you. Amen. Church ain't easy. Amen. But I've come to know that God remains a faithful God. Amen. And I learned some lessons from the tree because we shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth its fruit in its season and our leaves shall not wither and whatsoever we do, we do it's going to prosper. I learned some lessons there from the tree. If God plant you here in St. James Pentecostal, amen, I'm not moving because where he plant me, he will bless me. It, it's not dependent upon the circumstance. It's dependent upon the God that I serve and the God that I serve is a faithful God. The God that I serve will do the supernatural to bring me out. Amen. And if by chance and then plan to see all of this, but if by chance because that's the second sermon, if by chance God does not deliver me. I say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego this morning. I will still serve him. I don't know. You know, some things you go through, you just don't know. I don't know if I'll come out of this sickness. I don't know if I'll come out of this financial crisis. I don't know if I'll come out of this family situation. I don't know if God is going to bring me out. But I do know one thing is that I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. I will hold on to Jesus. I want to encourage somebody this morning to hold on to Jesus, to serve the Lord, to live for him. God is a faithful God. The anchor holds. Amen. God is our, Jesus is our sure and steadfast uncle. He will not disappoint us. Disappoint us. Stand. Let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. God, I pray first of all for those of us who, the, the group, I understand that we all belong to a group. And God, I pray for the first group of persons, those who are saved, believers in Christ, born again of the Spirit of the Lord. I pray, I pray God that you will strengthen, that they will not backslide, but that they will serve you. They may have to be martyrs. Oh God, but they will not backslide. They will serve you. They will live for you. God, they will continue to praise you and to bless your name. They will shout unto you with a voice of triumph because they know that you are God. And whatever happens, you remain God and you remain in control. So God, I thank you for, for keeping, for strengthening, for ministering by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Oh God, that we will continue to press forward. I pray God for those 
God unbelievers, God persons who have, oh God, an intellectual acceptance. They hear, but God, they don't have that deep connection. God, those who are just waiting until they're old enough to do what they want. God, those who, God, who just hear because of somebody. And if the person is not here, then they will not be here because they're here for people. Oh God, I pray that God, you will save this morning. I pray that you will draw to the bloodstained cross of Christ. I pray specifically, oh God, for the children who grew up in church, who have been hearing it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and year after year after year, but they have no anchor. Oh God, save our children this morning. Draw them to you, that they will serve you, and they will live for you. Oh God, I pray this morning, I pray, I pray, I pray. I pray, and as I'm praying, I'm seeing that mother that is crying out. Oh, for their children, that father who is crying out. Oh God, I pray that you will save this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who just come, just attracted, but they're not saved, not born again. They don't have to come to church. God, they're here, here. Dear God, they come, but they're not where they're supposed to be. I pray, God, that you will, oh God, bring them to that place of full surrender where they will serve you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, God, for saving and delivering and doing this mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you, dear God, for the victory. Oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. 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 I'm closing and I'm hearing the Lord to say, make it personal. Make it personal. That you're here this morning. And you're not saved, you're not born again. And you need to say yes to God, or you have been saying yes to God. But you came to church this morning and you were not saved, you were not born again. And you need, you need personal prayer. I want to pray for you. If there's such a person, just lift your hand. Amen. I see one person, I see two persons, is there a third person? You're here this morning and you, when you came to church, you, you know you're not saved. You know if Jesus is to come at this time, you are not ready to meet him. And you're here this morning, is there such a person? I right, see your hand already, is there a third person? Yeah, is there a fourth person? Those persons who came for the dedication of the baby. You know, are you all saved, born again? But you need to say yes to God. God has been speaking to you and you need to say yes to God is there and next person you just want to say yes to God right where you are yeah God saying pray for somebody you need personal prayer you have fourth person is there a fifth person here this morning you're not saved you're not born again somebody grew up in church you grew up in church if Jesus is to come you're not prepared to meet him is there a next person you want to say yes to God. I hear God saying, make it personal. Yes, you have fifth person. You have sixth person. God is saying, make it personal. Because some of us will just leave church and go back to our own ways. There are, strong, there are some strongholds that need to be broken. Where God wants to take you to a higher place. And he's speaking to you. You our next person. I just want to say yes to God. Hallelujah. One person I'm holding for one person again. Might just be you that I'm holding it for. Don't fight God. You can't find God and win. If God is speaking to you, say yes to him. Is he our next person? I want to say yes to God. Hallelujah. 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 
and, and, and the reason why I hold it long when I feel the Spirit of the Lord telling me hold it long is because I've had several experiences of holding it long and coming back thereafter of someone who in the congregation would have said to somebody next week I will serve the Lord right now I'm ready for all of that and they died so I recognize I'm not wasting time because this might just be a life and death moment for somebody who needs to say yes to Jesus Christ. Those of you who lifted your hands, come. Oh, let me pray with you personally. Come, come, come. Let me pray with you personally. Let's face me, line at the altar. I want to pray for you. Come, sir. There's nothing to be ashamed about. You come to church. Sometimes I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see what people are doing on parties and so forth. Nothing to be ashamed about when it comes to church. Nothing to be ashamed about. Even the sister in the back, come, come with, come with the baby. Come, come, you are wonderful. Let me, let's pray for you. Is there anybody else you need prayer? Anybody else need prayer? Anybody else? Anybody else? You need, you need God to touch you. Come on. Come. Hallelujah. 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 And I feel like there's still more people who need to say yes to God. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Come on. Somebody else wants to come. Come on. If you need to come, come. If you need to come, come. Come. If you need to come, come. Don't worry about who not coming. If you need to come, come. Come. Make that decision to come. If you need to come, come. Hallelujah. Anybody else? All right, well, let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Can I get seven persons? Sister Chilks. I want Sister Safia, Brother Alan. Amen. Let's take somebody and pray for them, Sister Delana. Come. Anybody else? Come and help us pray. Let's pray for, for them. Let's spread out a little more so that we can have a little space to pray for you. Let's spread out some more. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Sister Martha. Would you come and pray for somebody? How much do we have to? Three. Jillian, come and pray too. Please come and pray, Sister Jillian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, and I will pray, all right? We are one person. Let's pray for them. And, and church, we're not spectating. Stretch your hands towards them and pray that God will do a good work in their life, saving their souls and bringing them to that place of of total surrender in Jesus name hallelujah
Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Sing us come so that we can seek to close. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I trust you will come next week. The Lord's willing for the for part two. Um, we, we ended by the observation. Um, we still have to look at the challenge. We still have to look at the assurance. Amen. We, we want to hear what God is saying unto us as we continue to press forward in Him. Amen. Let me encourage you to have a great week. Don't let the week have you, but do have a great week. And remember, God loves you, and we love you too. And I love you. Amen. God bless you. We want to sing the doxology. After we have sung the doxology, consider yourself dismissed. Greet two or three persons before you leave. And there might just be somebody in church you don't know their name. Come and meet them this morning before you go and say, Hi, my name is Godfrey. I am so happy to meet you. Amen. God bless you. Now, if you see a girl or a boy, uh, that's something different, all right? Pastor didn't say about that, but he says, still meet somebody. God bless you. Praise God from God.